Okay, we cannot make it happen. Okay, it's not by knowing everything, how to do stuff. It's not by just structuring it, but it needs the Holy Spirit to to reveal step by step what we are supposed to do. Okay, we can we cannot do it. We're totally helpless without Him doing it. It's His house, and He's gonna build His house. Yeah, our role is somehow. We are the, the midwives, okay? We are the midwives of the house of prayer. Like, God wants to give birth to this. This is, is exciting, and we can feel, you know, we can feel like, oh, it should come out, okay? It's really, it has to come out somehow. Yeah, but we, we are there to help the process to make this happen. And, yeah, so this morning, I, I want that we take a time where we, we just invite the Holy Spirit to, to speak to us, to give us words, give us impressions, give us ideas of, of how this can work together. You know, that there are already some ideas out there for the next practical steps, but we want to just take this morning, take a step back and say like, okay, thank you, Jesus. This is, this is awesome what you have given us, all the gr good input and all of that. But now, Holy Spirit, what, what is it? What you want to speak to us together? What do you want to speak here through the different royal priests from the nations? You know, this is, this is a gathering for me. You know, these are all royal priests. You are a royal priest from your nation as a representative from, of your nation. And there is something that God wants to speak through you to us here, to us, to this region. There's something that you have to bring to this region. Yeah, okay, so we in YWAM, it's one of our big values is listening to the voice of God. Okay, this is really, this is what, what we are built on as a, as a movement. Yeah, YWAM is not an organization, we are a movement of the Holy Spirit and we, we insist on that, okay. It's, we are moved by the Holy Spirit. If He doesn't move us, we don't want to move, okay. And uh, we have this thing that is pretty much since the beginning. Uh, we have a prophetic teacher lady. Her name is Joy Dawson. And she has taught us these eight steps or ten steps for some. Uh, eight steps of intercession is, is really is like a protocol in the spirit. And I, I would like that we just do this together this morning as a beginning. And we're going to then be led into some time of, of just prayer meditation by Krista and Marvin. And... Then, um, whenever you've, you have something, you can come up, you can share it on the microphone, but also write it down, okay? We, we want to have impressions written down, and we want to gather them. And in the end of our time, we want to come together and, and read them out and speak and pray them back to Jesus and just have a time where we, we share about what we, we believe God is leading us in. Is that good? All right. So, the... <clears throat> Oh, is, is Jack here? Uh, no? Oh, there's Jack. Okay. Yeah, Jack, he, he gave me yesterday... Yeah, you want to come? He gave me yesterday a, a verse that he had for this gathering, before this gathering started, and I was like, yeah, you know, that, that's so right on. And um, it is somewhere in the Old Testament, but I have it here. So <laughs> it says, Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Arise, therefore, and build a sanctuary of the Lord God, so that you may bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built for the name of the Lord. Where, where was that, Jack? Where was that verse? First Chronicles 22, verse 19, okay? So that, I, I think that, that fits so well, okay? We want to now take this time, you know, uh, step back into the rest of God and set our hearts and our soul to seek the Lord our God. Arise, and then, you know, He wants to build with us the sanctuary of the Lord God. And He wants to bring the ark. He wants to come with His glory, okay? We want to welcome the glory of God here, His manifest presence, He's a living God. It's not, it's not a structure, it's not some nice principles, okay? We want to welcome the living God to speak to our hearts this morning. Okay, so we want to start 
want to start this time with just having a clean heart before God and just ask the Holy Spirit to, to seek our hearts and show us if there's anything that is, is not right with Him or with one another where, yeah, what He wants to clarify before we, we enter in. It says in Psalm 66 verse 18, If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. Or in Hosea 5.4, Their deeds do not permit them to return to their God. They do not acknowledge the Lord. Psalm 51 says, Create in me a pure heart, God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And Hebrews 10, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. So yeah, Holy Spirit, yeah, we invite you to seek our hearts, God, this morning. Show us if there's anything that does not please you in us, in our relationship, our thoughts, whatever. God, we say we want to be pure before you. We want to enter your presence, God, with pure hearts. We want to be yeah, the ones that listen from you, your sheep that hear your voice this morning. So wash us clean. Give us courage if there's anything to clarify, to do that, to bring that before you. Yeah, to repent of it. Just taking some time before you, Holy Spirit. dependence on you God we say we are totally dependent on you father it's not our vision not our agenda God father we want to tune in into yours God we say we we let go of our own agendas Papa God we say we want you more than anything else God we want you Jesus we need you Holy Spirit not by might or power, by your spirit alone can be done. So this is the, the second step. So I, I encourage you to also to do this, you know, as I'm going through them, to do it for yourself, okay? You're, you're now here as the, the royal priest, the representative of your nation in this gathering. So let's go through the steps together, just acknowledging to the Lord, laying down any, any own agenda, any of your, your own visions and saying, yes, Holy Spirit, we want you. I invite you, God. I lay it down, my own ideas, how I think it should be done, how I think, how I know even it would be right. I lay it down. I want you, Jesus. I want you. say we we die to our own reasoning 
imagination, desire, and burdens, what we feel, what we should pray for or say or do now, God. We say we, we die to that, God, to any of our own urges, Lord. We die to it now. We trust in you, Lord, with all our heart, and we do not lean on our own understanding, God. step is we're dealing aggressively with the enemy we're silencing his voice submit yourself then to God resist the devil and he will flee from you the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world on the contrary they have divine power to demolish strongholds we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ so yeah we say enemy you have no space here the accuser has no space here any confusion has no space here we say leave this place in the name of Jesus we want to listen to the pure voice of God here in this place we say enemy the devil has to be gone here from this place any other spirits have to leave this place in the name of Jesus leave we're taking the authority in Christ that we have and we say our ears are tuning in now to the voice of the Holy One to the lover of our souls and any other voice has to shut up now in the name of Jesus ask you to fill fill this place with the fear of the Lord fill our hearts with the fear of the Lord I pray for yeah, an awareness of your holy presence to rise here rise in our hearts you by faith for the exciting time you're going to give us now in your presence you will do something that is consistent with your character you're not a man that you should lie nor son of man that you should change your mind he doesn't speak and then not act he promises and then he does fulfill from everlasting to everlasting the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children so come let us sing for joy to the Lord let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song this is all about faith it's about us declaring to our own spirits that the scripture is true it is about declaring that God's ability and desire to speak to us is greater 
than our level of sin and inability to hear. Yeah, thank you, Father. Thank you that you are the God that speaks to your children. I pray you open, open our ears this morning. Open our level of faith, Lord. God, yeah, you are more able to make us listen than we are able to do this, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you love to speak to your children, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There is no shadow turning in you. You say the same. You can all lie. There is no shadow of turning. God alone, my hope comes from you. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. We're waiting silently before you, God, and listen for your direction. God speaks in different ways, so feel free you know, if it's for you in a different way, painting, dancing, laying down, walking, whatever it is, you know, allow him to speak. Each of us takes time now just to allow him to speak to us. Father, what is it you have for us here as your royal priests from the Caribbean? If your way, Holy Spirit.
somebody drawing a spiral and but then it became like all this spirals like and I was seeing the Caribbean map and there were like all the spirals coming up from every part of the Caribbean and I felt like um, it was like sound that was going up like were all the sound spirals going up and there were um, being more and more and stronger and stronger until um, yeah like the and they were going up to the sky until something yeah above the sky or under the sky or whatever and heaven or whatever broke and there was like a layer broken off and yeah there was like um, yeah yellow I guess and like I guess yeah open heaven or whatever so I, I yeah I think it's really like yeah an encouragement to yeah this is something that has to come the sound has to come from every island and um, yeah just an encouragement to keep on singing and to keep on praying and to not stop until that um, yeah layer is broken off and there is like open heaven over the Caribbean and so yeah I'm just gonna pray that so Jesus I just thank you um, yeah for what you want to do in the Caribbean father thank you that you really want to do a new thing father I thank you that you have so much more than religion father for the islands father thank you that you wanna yeah you want the Caribbean people to be free father thank you that you yeah, want them to be free to run with you, free to sing their song, free to pray their prayer, Father, until, yeah, until, um, yeah, there's breakthrough, until there's open heaven, until it's, yeah, it's breaking through, Father, and so, yeah, I just pray, Father, that you, yeah, you would come, Father, and this would, yeah, this would really happen, Lord, and, and you, you would break through, Father, and, and your people would be, yeah, just free to, to dance and worship and, and pray to you, Lord. This morning in the kitchen as I was preparing for breakfast um, there was a stack of bowls on the counter and as I went to grab the cups the cart the crate from the cups tipped the bowls over the edge of the counter and about 20 of them just shattered on the floor and so there was just shards of glass everywhere and um, of course, my first thought was, oh, I need to clean that up so I can keep getting breakfast out. But then I felt the Holy Spirit say, stop, look, listen. <laughs> and so I took a picture of it and I just said, okay, Holy Spirit, what are you saying? And he reminded me of a Jewish wedding. And um, I really felt that he was um, highlighting that he wanted to make covenant with us and covenant with the nations of the Caribbean unto houses of prayer. Um, and he was uh, really 
highlighting that what God has put together, let no man put asunder. Scripture to me that, um, yeah, he, he will cause houses of prayer to be birthed in the Caribbean nations, but it's a covenant that he's after. Um, and a covenant is just a very, obviously a very serious thing in his heart. Um, and so he's really wanting to um, extend an invitation, I felt, to weigh the cost, to count the cost, and to um, really, really use even for those of us that are here, those that might be in their own nations right now, um, desiring to have a house of prayer or already working in a house of prayer, but to really count the cost. And um, the other image that I had was, I think, and um, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in a Jewish wedding, they cre uh, step on the glass when they get married. And it's the, the, the concept is if this glass can be put back together, the way it was then let this marriage be ended otherwise it's forever and uh, so I really felt that it's just that's what's on his heart for uh, houses of prayer so Jesus you are our bridegroom our king and our judge and we love you with an everlasting love and your desire is for us we are your beloved and your desire is for us and God we ask that you would put that same desire in us for you that you would give us the supernatural grace to love you truly love you with all of our heart mind soul and strength and that you would make us one with you that we would be equally yoked with you we thank you, Holy Spirit, for the way that you are preparing us as we are the bride and you are preparing us for your, our King to come and be with us forever and to covenant with us for an eternal, everlasting covenant. And God, we ask that you would just move upon our hearts right now. Holy Spirit, just speak to each one individually and to us corporately in the Caribbean. And let us feel the weight of your presence in this. I really just feel like he's saying he wants to make a sacred trust between each one of us and each one of the nations unto this house of prayer. So God, we just thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Whatever is in your heart, we say yes, Lord. Come do what you love to do, God. Keep your promises. When we count the cost, God. We don't want to be builders who don't look at the cost, God. But we say yes to your heart. We are all yours. We submit to you fully, God.
couple of things. One this morning when you guys were practicing um, in your groups. When you were practicing in your groups this morning, um, I was just speaking in tongues and trying to get in, in enjoy it. Like, like we have a house of prayer here going on, right? Yes, Lord. And suddenly the Lord just surprised me and told me, listen, do you hear that? My name is being exalted. And whoa, I, had, I couldn't hold back the tears. It was so intense and he was so happy. It was like this place was being used for the purpose for what it was meant to be. His name was being exalted. And he said, my name is being exalted among the nations. And that was beautiful. The second uh, I think I have is when we started praying um, for this moment. I had a picture of the Caribbean map. And I saw this massive wave. It was this huge, massive wave. And the Lord said, I am coming and I'm bringing a massive wave of my spirit. I am coming. And this is something he has been telling me for months. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I have folk crazy. He says all the time, you keep on saying the same thing. And I'm like, well, that's what the Lord is telling me. He's telling it, telling over and over. I am coming. I'm coming through. And then he said, and you are going to steer it. And I think that's the part we need to understand. We are always praying and we're always praying for the Lord to do something. But it's 100% God, 100% us. We have to give ourselves into it too. And one thing that I have seen the Lord teaching me throughout the years is that when we pray and we pray these things that are like, I don't know who's going to make that happen because it's way too good. And the Lord is saying, well, you are going to be the answer of your own prayers. So how far is your commitment to me going to be for this to actually take place? And the other thing that I had the impression goes combined with this when we were praying for this conference uh, several times one of those times I had this picture where I saw we were all in this room and I saw a desk and there was like you know like the the official person that is there to register a marriage and I saw the Lord and we were the bride and he was excited because it was a wedding day and we were gonna get married with him and that's why your welcome cards have those rings. I didn't know how to explain it better. That's why the rings are there. Um, because I knew that the Lord will bring us to a place where we will speak about this. And that's, I, I thought it was awesome that you brought it up. I think the Lord is calling us to a place where we sanctify ourselves and we understand that he wants to come. Are we ready to hold what He's bringing? Because He is coming. That's no doubt. He wants to pour up His Spirit in such a massive way. So, Lord, I just pray, Father, that You help us understand what this means. As Viola was praying, please, Father, help us understand, Lord Jesus. We want to say yes to You. But... It's not just saying yes. I, I, I just pray, Father, that you pour out a revelation of who you are on us, Father. That you're faithful, that you're good. That whatever we see, whatever happens, God, we will know that we are safe under your wings. Sometimes I have the, that, that impression that it's like we, we are terrified to say yes because we don't know what it will mean. And the Lord wants us to know who he is. It's like, I am good, I am for you. I will never, ever, ever let you down. We can only say yes when we know who He is. And that's the longing of His heart, that we will know Him. That we will know Him and we will just throw ourselves into His arms and say whatever it is, whatever the cost. I am in this like a marriage. I am marrying you right now, oh Lord, and I say yes for whatever it is.
love that word, just um, even just the picture of the wave, um, and even just thinking about just the start of even YWAM. Um, if you know part of the story, it's like Lauren had this vision of the wave, and so as soon as she said that, I was like, oh, that's so cool. And because as soon as I landed here, I just felt like the Lord was saying that He really, like His, I feel like His heart, um, part of it for this place would be the that this region would be like the Kona of the Caribbean. And so I just, I mean, the Kona is so Kona is the headquarters for YWAM. And so I just felt like He's kind of saying like what he's done and what he's doing in Kona as far as like training, equipping and sending, like that's part of the the destiny and purpose for um, here at this base in Barbados, that it would be similar to that as far as training, bringing the people in, in this region, training, equipping, sending. Um, and then with that, I feel like there's uh, just that set apart is that you guys would carry just the ability to do family well. Because even just coming in here this last week, it's like, I just feel like family. Like our team just felt so connected to, to everybody here and even p just people coming from all over. And I just really believe that that's supernatural. We don't find that all the time. I think it's something special that the Lord's doing here in regards to um, the family of God. That when people come here, that there would be that supernatural grace to be a part of something. That, it, that they wouldn't get lost in the in the shuffle and just the the hustling around of what a busy kind of a busy base could kind of carry but just that the lord has that for this base is that there would be that fan like solid family and that it would be something that only the lord could do in this place um and then um just felt deuteronomy uh, 28 uh 6 that he would highlight that blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out um, that part of that grace is that people would come in and there'd be that ease and that they would go out and there wouldn't be um, I don't know any sort of just hardship in leaving sometimes it's hard when you you just have such a great experience even this week it's like oh I don't want to like leave my new family and my new friends but there's going to be the sweetness to be here in the now but then there's going to be the sweetness to have the grace to to get up and go to just keep saying saying yes like wherever you want to send me whatever it looks like okay here's the grace to get up and go and um, just encourage you as a team to just read through Deuteronomy 28 because I think there's some other promises that um, he wants to just show you guys um, so Jesus I just thank you that um, you have a special purpose for this region for the Caribbean God that you're doing a new thing in the islands that that they will praise you father I just bless this base to to carry the the family of God that people would come in and they would be fathered and mothered that there would be a spirit of counsel in this land that there would be a spirit of shepherding Lord that you would give the divine grace to come in to to leave well God that you would train and equip many singers and musicians and messengers in this land Jesus that would go uh, not just throughout the Caribbean yes that but to the ends of the earth God that there would be just great worship and incense arising, that this place would be pleasing, it would continue to be pleasing aroma and incense before your throne. So I just bless the fullness that you've ordained for this space, God, that you would be the one that comes to bring it to pass in Jesus' name.
what is in your heart Lord, we want your will to come Let it be here as it is in heaven Let it be here as in heaven Let it be here as in heaven Let it be here as in heaven shall hide me he shall set me high upon a rock and for that I felt like God saying that he is looking for yes that person's that desire just him just desire to be married to him and saying yes I want you as my bridegroom and then I saw this image of this huge angel just with a sword and it's like it's stirring the Caribbean Sea and God is saying that his word is stirring in the Caribbean and and it's powerful more than it seems that because of the stirring of of his word and then as as, as the water began to uh, make waves I saw this huge I I just describe it as a bomb but it's just a huge thing just dropped out of heaven it's like that was placed there in heaven with the Caribbean name on it and it's just like it dropped into the sea and just made these big huge waves and it came crashing into the islands crashing into the nations and God is saying I'm about to do something massive I'm about to do something that is gonna be so explosive that it's gonna um, shake up the Caribbean it's gonna shake up the nations and it's gonna cause incense to rise from every nation it's gonna cause people to desire him more and more and he's like he's not just um, shaking it up to let praises rise but he's shaking off it's like the potter and the clay it's like he's taking out um, the strongholds by their roots he's destroying them by their roots so that even as as praises will rise it will be such a great level of freedom in 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 their true identity into their true original design and that's what his heart is for the Caribbean so Papa I just pray that many will be saying yes to you, God. I pray that you will have yes from each nation, God. That many will rise up, Lord, and, and desire you more and more, God. Desire you as a bridegroom, Lord. That we would, we would be married to you, Father. 
And God, we pray that even as your word is already stirring, God, in this Caribbean, Lord, I pray, Father, for the great impact, Lord, of your, of your word, of your presence to be poured out, Lord. And God, that just what you want to draw here, Lord, what you want to see um, accomplish here in this Caribbean, God, I just declare that it shall come to pass, Lord. I just prophesy that it is done, God. We say yes to you, Father. We say yes to your will and to your way, God. And we want to see your heartbeat, God. We want to feel your heartbeat, Lord, for this Caribbean, oh God. We want to see you and feel your heartbeat for the nations, my God. And we just ask that we will be Oh God, in a place that, that is ready to run with what you're asking us to ready and to be running with, Father. So we pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. talking about the Lord and um, found out that he was the founder, one of the founders of this base. And the other man was a man who um, was in charge for the whole uh, Caribbean area of um, uh, like monitoring hurricanes and storms and uh, releasing, releasing warnings, telling people when to evacuate. He was a man from Haiti. He had been in this role since 2010, just um, uh, his full-time job monitoring hurricanes and storms. And I just felt like the Lord was highlighting um, just the missions and the call of the Caribbean and just kind of um, through just like through the symbol of this, this man named Robert. And then the 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 calling of a watchman over these islands. Uh, I just felt like he was saying that uh, the Caribbean nations are going to be places with a unique prophetic gifting um, to see what God is doing, the storms that are coming in the in the negative, but then also in the positive, the uh, the winds of His Spirit, what He's doing at what time, and He's and that um, men and women from this region are anointed by God to be messengers of what he's doing, um, the times and the seasons and the movement of his heart. Um, so I just want to pray into that. So Lord, I just thank you for this, what seems like a, a prophetic symbol, even as I was getting ready to land in Barbados. These two men, um, and God, I ask that you would raise up every believer in the Caribbean, this watchman, watchmen on the wall of intercession, watchmen who proclaim what you're doing. God, give a unique prophetic gifting to be able to call the nations to something, to be able to remind the nations of something, to 
able to warn the nations to bow down and kiss the sun while there's still time. God, anoint this people, anoint this region, strengthen them in what you've already called them to God. the Caribbean join in the song, song of creation, singing hallelujah, singing hallelujah, let the Caribbean join in the song, the song of creation, singing The Caribbean join in the song, the song of creation, singing hallelujah, singing hallelujah. Let the Caribbean join in the song, the song of creation, singing hallelujah, singing hallelujah. speaking I I got two words that um, they gave me in um, um, blue and drought and so I was just asking him to um, to explain and elaborate speak more on that and that the, um, the first uh, the blue I was just seeing like like the Caribbean Sea um, but then um, he showed me the, the blue is also the blue of heaven and there's um, that it's speaking of spiritual and spiritual drought and um, I was like okay um, what what do you want what do you want to do Lord and um, um, and and he reminded me of the story of Elijah um, after uh, he'd slaughtered all the the prophets of Baal in First King 18's, no, First Kings 18, 30, uh, from 41. Um, I would just read it. And Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of the rushing of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel, and he bowed himself down on the earth and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There's nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And at the seventh time he said, Behold, a little cloud like a man's hand is rising from the sea. And he said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down, lest the rain stop you. And in a little while, the heavens grew black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And I, I feel that the Lord has wanted to give this message of hope. In the midst of a spiritual drought, He is calling up His intercessors like Elijah, who do the great exploits of the Lord, who preach the, uh, the gospel of the kingdom, and who who, to, um, who put the people on um, um, straight? Like if God is God, choose Him. If Baal is God, choose Him. And to proclaim the kingdom of of God. And I, I feel that those uh, that God, the Lord is just raising up His intercessors here in the Caribbean and and inviting us all in in that um, in that reality of interceding in the midst of a drought while we don't see any cloud um, even unto seven times that he sent his servant up um, to um, because he's, he said 
there is a sound of the rushing of rain so i feel that the lord is inviting uh, inviting us and and the islands into hopeful intercession coming from the place of hearing hearing the word of god and hearing the sound of the rain that is coming and from that place interceding not interceding from defeat or oh this is drought and let's just pray whatever but i feel the lord is wanting to pour out his hope um, and his hope in the intercessors who then fall on their knees and and pray i don't i feel that the lord is um also one specific wants to say something about the seven times i don't know what that means but um but i, I feel that he wants to raise up his intercessors and, and wants to strengthen them with hope to intercede um that they hear the sound of the rain in their ears and that they will then see it with their eyes and um and that the spiritual drought will be broken that there will be thick clouds and heavy rain um, that will fall on the islands the clouds of, of rain of revelation of salvation of the kingdom of God advancing of the seeds that have been sown being watered and, and springing up like a desert um, in the rain or after rain when the rain has come over you didn't think anything could ever grow there but all of a sudden there is all of this life abounding and um, and that's what I'm, I'm seeing the Lord is wanting to do and, and he's wanting to release the hope so Lord we pray for the intercessors first Lord I pray would you give the intercessors in the islands hope would you raise them up to pray with vision Lord would you open their ears to hear the sound of the rain that is coming would you open their ears to hear what you are wanting to to do Lord let them hear and see the rain that you're going to give Lord Jesus open their eyes to be forerunners Lord friends of the bridegroom that wake up the bride Lord Jesus let them pray from that place of hope and faith and let the rains come we pray that you will end the spiritual drought, Lord Jesus, and that revival will spring up from all of the islands around, Lord Jesus. We pray this in your holy name. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing water. Rise up, O intercessors. I hear the sound. Call them for the intercessors. Intercessors filled with hope for this region. Filled with hope for this region. Filled with hope for this region. Rise up, men of hope. Lift your voice. Uh, God's always given me some unusual words and this one's kind of in the top but um, I feel like I should share it uh, this is too hot. 
I was sitting there and just kind of listening and not really putting a whole lot of effort. I got to have a word. I got to have a word. And I heard a sound and I saw a picture of my brother. And this is going to be really out there. But I grew up on a hog farm and my brother was clearing out behind the barn. He had a blade behind the tractor and uh, he was removing not just mud, a little bit of extra from the pig discharges. Um, and I heard a scraping and a cleaning and you know all this muck that accumulated was be put into a, a manure spreader that was actually spreading out into the fields and I'd been talking to Volker a lot because um, you know we've been sensing some things going on with the base and and it's like it's like all of a sudden something came clear it's like that's where we've been you know we've accumulated stuff it's us like I saw mountains on each side and it was just the the residue of the the mountains were pouring on this base and and uh, he said Phoebe you were the beginning the, the, you were seeing the beginning of the end transitioning into a new day and I just feel like the Lord's saying I'm cleaning back to the foundations of what the purpose was when Bill you took the nerve to take this on and he's going to restore the dreams that you had and the dreams that those people prayed. And when you mentioned meeting um, Robert on the plane, which I've never met him. I mean, there's been many, many people have invested in this property. And there's been declarations being made over this property. And I mean, God called me from South Carolina not knowing anything about this property. And knowing that it's a plantation and it, it influenced my world. And I say, God, you know, okay, what are you doing? He says, I'm not only just clearing it off this week, clearing off the muck, clearing off the thing. I'm going to bring out the power washers, and we're going to clean this thing to where you have a freshness. God's going to bring a real level of freshness in this community. And so that's my heart, you know, that God would bring closure to some extent. And it's not a chapter. This is a book closure. You know, there are certain things that happen in one book that doesn't carry to the next book. And I just sense that God really wants to do a true ending to that era so that we can build clean and clean foundations. And then we're going to put trenches around this area so that when the residue happens, it doesn't come onto our place we walk. You know, we can walk on clear and and clean, clean concrete, clean tile, wherever we're going to be clean, that our feet will be clean because of the message that God wants to bring forth. And it's a message of proclamation. And then this morning, yesterday, I was just like, I couldn't, I couldn't put in words. And we did the prophetic art thing. So last night I sat down and started drawing something. In the, and I found the word hope. And there was a flag that had hope, you know. And there's a declaration of hope that needs to come into this region because this region has a song that's unique from any other place on the planet. I've already seen it. Again, I've been influenced in my life from what came from this region. And there's a, there's a level of appreciation and embrace that God wants to release. So I'm gonna pray that out right now. So Lord, we say, do it, God. Do it, God. We can't do it. We don't have the equipment to do it. We don't have the bulldozers to do it. But you can do it. And you can bring it down to the foundation so that it begins pure again. That There's a pure song. There's a pure hope. There's a pure revelation. And a pure boldness. That the enemy will be scared to come in the tribe. The line of the tribe of Judah is going to roar. And there's going to come those waves from his presence. So we welcome you, Jesus. We welcome the new book, the new book cover, the new look, the new smell. So we ask you, Lord, to demonstrate in us individually a fresh, a fresh, that we do not strive in our own strength. But we begin to work with your leading and your prompting. And we do not second guess ourselves. And when we're uncomfortable, we still step out. 
and do what you say do. So we honor you that you're the radical God that we can serve and we can follow. You're like David dancing in front of the ark. And we follow you, Jesus. We follow you wholeheartedly. speaking to this area. I could have chosen any from among the vast multitude of royal ones who follow me, but one is my beloved dove, unrivaled in beauty, without equal, beyond compare, the perfect one, the favorite one. Others see your beauty and sing of your joy. Brides and queens chant your praise, how blessed is she. Look at you now, arising as the day spring of the dawn, fair as the shining moon, bright and brilliant as the sun in all its strength, Astonish astonishingly to behold as a majestic army waving banners of victory. And I just felt that the Lord speaking this over this area, this region, over the islands, how beautiful the song that is arising, how beautiful are the people, that there's no one like you, that the songs are unrivaled beyond compare. So Father, I thank you. I thank you for who you say the people of the islands are in the Caribbean, God. I thank you that you say they're beautiful, that their beauty is unrivaled. Beyond compare, they're, they're your perfect ones, they're your favorite ones, God. And Father, as, the, as, as songs arise from the islands, Father, I'm asking that revelation of who they are, your watchmen, your singers, your musicians, that they would have revelation of who they are, your bride. God, I'm asking that they would not hide their face from you. You're saying, let me see your face. Let me hear your voice. In Jesus' name.
me see your face Let me hear your voice My love, my dove Let me see your face Let me hear your voice Let the song arise from me song arise from the ends of the earth let your song arise from the islands let your song arise from the ends of the earth let your song arise I just want to ride on the wave that others have mentioned. This wave that is, is coming, um, I am also convinced that there is a, a great move of God that is coming. And many are already sensing that in, in Jamaica. And there is a move of prayer that is that is gaining momentum in in Jamaica. And what I sense that God is doing now is is preparing the region, not just an island, but the islands for this wave of God. I had a dream some time ago about being on the shore when a tidal wave was coming. And one of the things that I am aware of is that one of the worst places to be when a tidal wave is coming is on the shore. If not the worst place to be. In fact, you are safer out in the water. And that is where I think the Lord is calling us to. He says, launch out into the deep. Get into the deep. It's time for us to learn how to surf. You know, how to ride the wave. And so there is, there is this time of equipping that... I believe that we are in now. It is a time when things seem to be quote-unquote calm. Not calm in the sense of inactivity, but calm in the sense of the perceived move of God. I mean, it seems so calm now. God doesn't seem to be moving in power. But this time is a time of preparation and equipping and the challenges that we face during this time are actually part of the training for what is coming and so I just pray that we will be prepared and not be discouraged by the current situation some people get discouraged you know we've been praying so long we haven't seen much but the lord has a way of moving suddenly you know and we need to be prepared for this suddenly um but in that time 
of preparation as it says in Malachi chapter 3 it says the Lord whom you are seeking will suddenly appear in his temple but then the warning is he says but who can abide the day of his coming for he shall be like a refiner's fire and a fuller soap and he will sit as a purifier of silver and he says he's doing this he's go, he's, he says and I will purify the Levites and he's purifying the Levites for this purpose he says that I might receive acceptable sacrifices as in the days of old in other words he's preparing us that we might be prepared to give him what he needs or what he wants that is worship and he says when I receive what I want he says then I will be a swift judge against sorcerers against adulterers against those who withhold the wages from the wage earner and all kinds of injustices and these things are happening in our nation and we're saying God do something about it and the Lord says I'm coming but are you prepared for my coming so there's this preparation and we're saying Lord help us to be prepared for this time the other thing that I just want to mention is the call to be zealous for the house of the Lord for the building of the house for for every nation the Lord is saying the house of prayer is for the nation I mean the house of prayer primarily is for God and for worship but it is also for the nation for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations so the house of prayer being built and established in any nation is for the nation it's for the blessing of the nation it is through the house of prayer and what we um, embrace and partner with in this place of intercession that brings the blessing into the nation and so the Lord is saying my house of prayer I'm going to establish my house of prayer in the nations and he's doing that now and it is for the nation and this blessing is, is, is to be released into the nation so what is happening here on the Y1 base and what is happening over there where David my brother David is with the prayer room and other prayer rooms in different places and across the Caribbean is for the sake of fulfilling the purpose of God in that nation so so what is happening and what you are a part of is critical for the fulfillment of God's purpose in the nation people may be looking down and say oh, these people are wasting time it seems so weak and, 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 and without value right now but this is critical for the fulfillment of God's purpose in the nation in Barbados people are turning up their noses and, 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 and scoffing and, but this is the, the, the working of the enemy to frustrate and to, to prevent this because he knows if this succeeds then the purposes of God are going to come rushing in like a tidal wave and, and, and this is what we are preparing for this is what is actually helping to build this wave that is, is coming and so Father we pray this day Lord that that which is in your heart would be revealed to us Lord, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation might be what is manifest among us, that we might know what to do, 
in, in this season. Lord, you are saying in this hour that though things have been seemingly slow, but Lord, the times have changed. And that this is actually now a time of acceleration. Lord, when things are going to be speeding up and things are going to be happening quickly. So, Father, we just ask for help today that we might be prepared for what you are bringing to us. Father, I pray that this base and the other bases across the Caribbean where prayer is being extolled, Lord, that we will know how to pray and what to pray for. And that in this time, we will be prepared for what is coming. For the Lord whom you are seeking shall suddenly appear in his temple. Lord, help us to be prepared. Lord, to, to be to be purified, to be, to be already offering uh, acceptable sacrifices to you. Lord, that we might not be those who are, are judged when you come. But Lord, that we would be in that place where acceptable worship is already being offered. Strengthen us in this place, we pray. Help us to hear your voice and to respond appropriately to your will. In Jesus' name. do my best to communicate that <laughs> I want to speak like idea thing from God and it's God wants the design of the Caribbean uh, for himself he wants for himself belongs to him the culture the music the people the history belong to him and I want to pray for this because he has jealous for the Icelands and he, the Icelands are like David and it's a design of priest and uh, the Iceland looks tiny uh, small nations and uh, 
looks like they don't have much strength, more power or influence on the world. Uh, the people uh, can, can think what can expect the world about the Caribbean. But God chose the weak, the unappreciated, to, to exalt and glorify. And God wants to unroot the mindset of weakness, poverty, small, and division. And I want to pray for, for this. Jesus, thank you for your heart and your desire because you want all countries, all nations for you because you are worthy. You are worthy of each music, each design. All history belongs to you. Each people belongs to you. And you have jealous, you have jealous, have jealous for for the nations, for the, the lands, for water, for for food, for everything, for everything belongs to you. And one establish your kingdom in every nation of the world. And you you have a purpose in Caribbean and release the priest of David in Caribbean through the music, through the prayers, through the, the people dancing, expression of arts, knowledge from the history and you 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 can change the history of the nations with your presence and the manifestation of your glory. Thank you because you, you you destroy, you break the mindset of weakness. Thank you, Jesus, for the fire you are arise in this place and you will continue this work. And I ask you, Lord, that fire in the Caribbean prevail prevail year by year for years and the eternity the name of Jesus Worshipping warriors of the Caribbean, the, the David nations, God. Yeah, your royal priesthood of the islands, God. Father, yeah, we, we say, yeah, we, we, hear, we hear the sound of your calling, God. You're calling the islands. The islands are waiting, are waiting, God, to be awakened, to rise to their, to their destiny. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you want to do really a, a sacred covenant here with the nations of the Caribbean yeah, to put on on display as yeah, as your priests God, in the earth a region of priests God thank you father thank you for such a privilege God thank you Jesus Also want to pray out for uh, the prophets and to, to arise from the nations of the Caribbean father I pray for for those that yeah, have been discouraged or confused father that yeah feel small and, or feel like they have nothing to say but I pray that you encourage them God. father I pray that they know that they have a voice Lord and that their voice is needed God father that it needs you know all 
all the parts of your body, God, to rise up and, and share what you put into them, God. Father, we're calling forth the prophetic voices from the Caribbean, God, to rise up and to sing, sing the song that you have given to them, God, in their tune, Jesus, in their way, Father. Yeah, let the prophetic songs arise from the Caribbean, God. to make a covenant here and, and I think this is very significant and I was wondering how how do we do this a covenant here with God and in the moment I was asking God how do we do this Gabi came and said hey we have to make a covenant with God and I had this picture <laughs> so it's beautiful yeah so she had this picture of the hands the hands of the royal priest uh, touching over one another laying on one another and uh, then being bound together with a white blanket uh, as a covenant of the Lord. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, the priests us here. Okay, us the, the priests of the Caribbean. We're making a covenant with one another and with the Lord for for this time. Okay, for yeah, him raising up a royal priesthood here in this nation. Okay, he wants to raise up. This people that will carry the Ark of the Covenant, that will bring His glory back to the Caribbean. Okay, so I, I would like to ask you guys that you come. Yeah, you come here in the middle, and we're gonna do this. Okay, we're gonna make a covenant here. We need, for sure, everybody, at least one person from each nation. But I, I want to encourage you all to come. Okay, we are all here, whether right here from from this place, a priest from the nation. Oh, we are midwives, okay? We're gonna now give to give birth together to this covenant with the Lord, okay? And we're gonna do this now and pray this out here in the presence of God, okay? So just come in the center and we'll somehow do this, yes?
nation turn and try obedience to you a spotless bride and this song that we now raise is hastening the day every nation turn and try obedience to you a spotless bride and this song that we now raise is hastening the day
us, Father, we just stand before you today. We thank you for this covenant that you have, you have made with us today. In your house, in your presence, with your people. Father, we ask that this would just be a small sign, a small representation, a small picture of what you want to do across the Caribbean. God, we ask you that every nation represented that you would raise up singers, raise up musicians, raise up intercessors, raise up messengers, raise up those builders, raise up apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors. God, we ask you today that it would be um, that it would be a, an establishing of the new thing that you want to see, the new sound. God, we ask you today that this would be the pure, the, the beginning of the pure priesthood that begins uh, displayed by this white sheet. God, this white blanket that's binding us together, it's purity, it's loving one another, it's commitment to one another, it's community. Underneath the cross of Christ, the blood of Jesus washing us and us proclaiming the gospel of Christ to a broken generation. God, we ask you today that you would do it in our day, that you would do it in our time, God, that just as David Livingston saw the fires and the smoke rising from the villages of the lost, God, and he saw the, the, the entire land covered with lost vi uh, villagers without, um, without the knowledge of Jesus. God, I ask you that you would, like you gave Dick Eastman this picture of the, the fires of, of the incense of prayer rising from the villages of the Caribbean. God, I ask that it would be from every island, the fires of incense of, that rises to your throne, God, that pleases your heart, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, that you would overcome every obstacle. In the name of Jesus, we speak grace, grace to every mountain. God, we ask you today for hope to arise. Hope begins with a vision. God, I ask you for fresh vision, for fresh faith, for someone, even these in this room, to catch something that would be like a, like a seed that's planted in the ground. They would catch something that's like a virus that spreads from one person to the next. That it's those, those um, visions that are written on uh, napkins in a restaurant over coffee. God, that it's uh, those visions that are, what if this could happen? The what if of God coming into our midst. God, there's hope. Lord, for you are the God of hope. You're the God of vision. Lord, I pray that this people would not be ones that perish from lack of vision, but they would be ones that have hope because they are filled with vision. Lord, we thank you for what you are doing in our midst, and we ask you to establish it. God, establish the foundations. Establish the pillars. Establish those ones who will stay strong despite the storms. God, even in the midst of those tidal waves, God, I pray that you would establish the ones that will stand firm and not be moved. And Lord, I pray that Deuteronomy 31.8 that someone gave me uh, the week before I came here, not knowing anything about what we're doing, Deuteronomy 31.8 says, I, am, I, the Lord, will be with you. I myself will go with you. And do not be dismayed and do not be discouraged. And the, the emphasis he was um, putting on was on uh, do not be discouraged, as if we were taking on the identity of discouragement. That identity is not just a feeling, but it's actually an identity that ha that can t you can take upon yourself. As if you were saying, don't be a watermelon or don't be a piece of wood or whatever. It's don't be discouraged. Be the priesthood. Be who God called you to be. Be those ones who arise. And so, Lord, I just thank you today that you're breaking off that discouragement, that wrong identity, those wrong ideas of who you are, and you're calling us in to your presence. You're calling us into the place of victory. You're calling us into the place where the situations that we're seeing right now in our lives don't define us. We're not letting the past define us. Well, that never happened to me before, or I've never seen God do that, or it's always been this way, and this is the way it is now, or my feelings are just this 
way and it won't change. God, we break that off in the name of Jesus. And we speak hope and we speak life and we speak destiny and we speak uh, an awareness of what you're doing and what you see about our future and about where this thing is headed that you desire a pure and a spotless bride and a priesthood who would minister to you. So we thank you, Jesus, for hope. We thank you for this covenant. And we say, do it, Jesus. Do it, Lord. Though it seems foolish in the eyes of man, in the eyes of heaven, we, we see the effects and the ripples going out from this place. Let this be a shift, a shifting point and a turning point. For the Caribbean, God, let this be a shifting. Even today, let there be a joy that begins to, to spring up in every prayer room because of what you're doing, because of who you are, and because of we are who we are in you, in Jesus' name. I have a scripture here. Um, I'm going to read the first one I read earlier, um, and it says from 1 Chronicles 22, 19. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Arise, therefore, and build the sanctuary of the Lord, so that you may bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God into the house that is built for the name of the Lord. And then continuing from that in 1 Chronicles 28, 9 to 10, uh, the Lord says, As for you, my son Solomon, know that God of your father no sorry know the God of your father and serve him with a whole heart and a willing mind for the Lord searches all hearts and understands every intent of the thoughts if you seek him you will find him but if you forsake him he will reject you consider now for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary be courageous and act It's good. It's good. So there, there is a, a holy charge that God has, has given to us in this covenant. And um, we, we have for Saturday, for our last meeting, we want to do a commission. I believe that the Lord wants to commission us. And I think this is already, you know, this is already His commissioning. We have made a covenant with one another, you know. I, I said when, when we did this here, it's deeply personal because he's, he's building with us, you know, it's not a ministry thing or something, you know, it's really, I believe, you know, as we look at each other in the eyes, you know, it's the Lord looking into our eyes as we're making this covenant, you know, he wants to lead us with his eyes as we're looking to him and to one another. So this is, this is amazing, it's very personal, this covenant, okay, so yeah, I just want to encourage you. Uh, we're going to go now to, to lunch and whatever else that comes, you know, but that you're really taking this. You know, we had, we had some very enjoyable days soaking in the presence of the Lord and being equipped and all of that. But th there, is, there is a direction, okay, that God is having. There is there's a reason why He has you here. Okay, the Lord has a reason for having you here. So I want to encourage you to, to grab this opportunity and let's really, let's, let's see how practically we can make this happen together. How, we, how can we together build the house of prayer here in the Caribbean? You know, let's really connect. How, what can we do? How can we help you in your nation? You know, how can we help each other? How can we do this? Okay, let's sit together as we eat, as we have coffee breaks and stuff and really like, oh, have brainstorming and just have the Holy Spirit in our midst and, and connect and make plans with one another. Yeah. We will share over the next yeah, three days is only, you know, some practical ideas of uh, what God has spoken to us here. And we also want to hear from you and just share with one another, okay? That we're, we're doing this together. We're doing this together. Like I, I just want to throw out one thing here and you know, just as, as an idea, as an inspiration, okay? So the, the one thing God has spoken to us to do our next uh, discipleship training school here based on the topic of the one thing and we're going to 
go to three different nations. So it will be Barbados, St. Vincent, and Guyana. And um, he has said that we are supposed to, you know, start a place of prayer in, in each of the three nations with this school, you know. So we're going to go there and, and do like a, a seminar and, you know, just run somehow a house of prayer in this nation for a week or so. So if, if you're from that nation, of course, you know, we need you. We need you to do this with us, you know, to, to help us facilitate that. If you want to come along and, and strengthen this effort, you know, you're super welcome. Yeah, so the more the merrier we can really like have a place of prayer going. And, you know, th these are little ideas. We can come to one another and, and have seminars with our different strengths that we have. You know, we have in some place we have the musicians more, in some place we have the teachers, the prophets. So let's really see how we can exchange what the Lord has given to us and, and just see how he binds us together in this, okay? So that's a very practical application, but I believe it has to become practical, yeah? It, we really have to make this step and become practical. Good? Can we say yes? <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, maybe that was for me the yes, you know, just for my ego or something. All right. So you want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to share that. I mean, I don't know if you guys noticed, but that was really powerful. When we were all standing there together, I, I, I was trying to see if I can come through or not. I'm holding the baby. So I just said, okay, I'll just stand behind my husband as we're one anyway. So, But when we were all there together, there was a moment where I don't know if you felt wind coming into the room, but I could hear a wind. I, I don't know. I, I didn't really feel it, but I could hear the wind very strong. And in that moment, there was an amazing pressure. And I thought we were, we were holding it together. And I felt like God's finger touched the white rope when we were there. It was like we really made a pact with the Lord today with one another. And it was unbearable. I felt my legs could not hold the weight. I'm like, I'm going to fall. And then he left. And I was like, Lord, that was you. The Lord made a pact with us. He really touched it. I don't know if you felt it. I did. So, just wanted to share that. Yes. Very good. Okay, Father, yeah, we, yeah, we want to just yeah, acknowledge that your presence here this morning, God. Thank you, Father. Yeah, the eternal God coming into this little room with your little people and they are making a covenant with us God you taking us serious thank you Lord thank you Holy Spirit thank you for your presence yeah, thank you for your priest thank you for your word yeah, that is dwelling here among us thank you God we love you so much Father have your way have your way with us Thank you, Father. Amen.